hey, you know what? I was actually going to sing a really cool opening about how great the 6500 features are, uh, but then, then I forgot I'm not a musician. But I am an engineer. Join me in the lab, and let's start configuring. <laughs> Hey folks, thanks for joining me in the lab. Boy, we are going to dissect one fantastic feature today on the 6500, and that's VSS. Now, if you're like me, you love VSS, but one of the things that you really dislike about it is the fact that I can only have one supervisor module uh, in a switch at a time. And kind of an Achilles heel of the whole feature. It works great, just I sure would like to have redundant soups in there. And that was always a problem. Until now, dramatic turn to camera. Uh, we've actually, now you can set up VSS to have uh, two supervisors per switch uh, in, in a 6500. So you can take a look here at the 6500s I actually have on set. Now you can see I've got four soup cards uh, in uh, each, each of these devices, two in each of course. And we're going to go ahead and set up VSS uh, and show you that it really doesn't take anything up to get it going. As a matter of fact, we can take advantage of the extra soup card without doing any additional config changes whatsoever. That's right, man. Your VSS configs don't change. We set it up. The switch automatically takes advantage of that extra soup card, keeps all my uplinks forwarding, uh, so I've got a single span uh, that can actually take care of all my devices out there, every uplink forwarding, everybody's happy, and uh, life is good. So let's go ahead and get this configured up and run it through a few tests here. So I've already got my uh, TechY 6500 uh, in config mode. Uh, let's go ahead and start setting up my uh, switch virtual domain. Virtual domain, uh, let's call it, let's do tab to completion so I spell it right. Uh, virtual domain 9. Uh, you can see we went ahead and our pomp has changed. Still nothing here. If you set up VSS before, you're not really going to see anything new uh, me typing in here. Uh, there's been a lot of really cool stuff that's built in on the back end, so this stuff is recognized automatically. So let's tell this which device it is. Uh, you are switch number one. And let's go ahead and tell it its priority. Switch number one, priority is 110. And its upstream partner, its priority is 100. Uh, now we actually get out of this mode here. And let's go ahead and configure up our interface channels. So interface, port, <laughs> got to spell that one right, uh, channel, uh, this will be port channel 1. No shut. Uh, again, no big surprises here, right? You know, i tell you something I like to do, especially when it comes to 6500, when I have so many darn interfaces uh, on this device, I always like to write a description of uh, what each port group is doing so that I know real quick where VSL is, uh, where anything important is. That little extra bit of time really helps, helps the next person following you uh, to troubleshoot the device or understand what your config is. So I always, always, always try to use uh, the description command uh, on my important uplinks. I don't do it on all of them uh, like I should, but at least on the important ones I certainly do. So description VSL uplink to uh, switch number two. Um, and then let's go ahead and set our switch virtual. Switch virtual link number one. Boom. Okay. So now we've set up our port channel. Now the next thing to do is to add in uh, our, inter our physical interfaces into that group, turn them on, and then do switch convert mode to actually enable VSS and start rock and rolling from there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's do interface. And since it is a, uh, a range of ports, we'll do interface range command. 10 gig, because we love that 10 gigabit. Um, so 1 slash 4 colon T, 2 slash 4. As you see, I'm actually grouping... Uh, in this one, I'm, I'm grouping in my interfaces for uh, my, my slots for both of these uh, supervisor cards to be plugged in. So lock that in. Let's do a no shut on that. Um, and then let's go ahead and turn the channel group on. Channel group 1 mode on. And you got to love the pause you get from there. Like this, what you're thinking about it. Boom. And now it's all locked in. Final step. To make sure that you don't come up in RPR mode uh, is actually turn your redundancy on for SSO. So let's go let's exit out of here. Redundancy. Now you can do this at the, at, at the front part too uh, if you want. Uh, but I, I do it at the end uh, just because it's more fun. Uh, and then we do mode SSO. Click. And yes, we do want to do that. Okay. And that's simply it. Uh, we get it out of there. We're, we're actually um, uh, changing our, our, just switched our modes over. Let's get out, out of this command. We're out of that mode. In our final commode, 
our final commode. <laughs> our final mode to actually get this to work is do our uh, switch uh, convert mode virtual. Uh, hopefully this won't be thrown in the commode, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Switch uh, convert mode virtual. Now when you plug this in, you're going to get the warning that's going to tell you that it's going to make all these changes. It's going to reboot the switch and get everything up and going. So we're going to go ahead and execute this command. Yes. And the switch is going to reboot. It's going to come back up and it's going to be peered up with my 6500 below here. And uh, we'll start looking at some, command some commands to show that we got this thing fully operational. Now during the reboot process, one of the things I did was I caught a screenshot of, uh, of an important uh, config you definitely want to take a look at. Now, what a lot of folks like to do is they like to actually have, if you're connected up to a terminal server, is actually have all four windows open so they can watch all the supervisor modules come up. It's just kind of fun to do. Uh, in this case, I'm just connected with a single console cable. And so uh, an important command to look, uh, and, and I'm just showing right here because it, it, it's a screen capture, is uh, to make sure that our 10 gigabit interfaces are coming up and that they're a member uh, in the right port channel group. Um, so you can see that both our interfaces uh, on those cards popped up. They're in the right port channel group, uh, and that's definitely good news. Uh, but let's go ahead and double confirm and double check that everything uh, is up and kicking. Now, one of my favorite commands to look at is the show VSLP lump sum uh, or LMP sum. I call it lump sum, uh, but it's LMP sum. Uh, and that actually, what you're looking at here is you're looking at the interfaces uh, on the switch that I'm setting at and that it's seeing both sides of the connection. Uh, so here, uh, let me stretch out just a little bit. Uh, here is my, uh, my, my, my interfaces, that they're operational, um, that it is seeing actually both sides, and the, the peer is seeing actually both sides over here. And these are my timers. Um, this is actually uh, down to the millisecond level what it is actually seeing and setting up. So these are all very good indications um, that, uh, that I've got a nice, uh, very healthy uh, switch out there. But let's take another look. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's do a show switch uh, virtual. Now, show switch virtual is a pretty cool command uh, that sums up a lot of stuff. It's going to actually tell me what mode uh, my switch is, that it's not operating in standalone mode. Um, it's going to show me my domain number, my local switch number, and my peer switch number, um, and then what state that these are in. You can see active uh, and standby is uh, the mode these switches are in. Uh, really good, really point-to-point -point information uh, to set this up if you need it. Uh, let's take it a step further. We can do show switch virtual redundancy. And now here's where we really get uh, into the meat of uh, what we're doing on the switch because now we're looking at it. Uh, you know, as you see, we're, 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 we're narrowing our scope down more and more to make sure everything's good and operational here. And now we're actually looking at the slot level, at the supervisor level, to show you what everything is happening here. So now we're looking at, at switch one, slot one, uh, showing that it, that it is active, uh, the fabric is active, and the control plane is active, all very good things. Um, slot two, switch two, let me roll it down here a little bit. You can see it's the next thing. It's showing you that it's in warm. Uh, it's been up for an hour and 25 minutes, um, and that it's ready to rock and roll if we need it. Um, switch 2, let me go ahead and scroll that down. Switch 2, slot 1, is showing that we're in standby hot. That's our switch over target, uh, and we're in active and standby. And then, of course, uh, the, the, the final piece of the command here, let me scroll up the rest, is the slot to, uh, switch 2, slot 2, was shown we're in warm, uh, and that we're ready to actually uh, rock and roll uh, if we're called on. I really, really like uh, the, the VSS, and now with the ability to actually have quad supervisors so I can really build out an incredibly redundant network, uh, boy, that's just icing on the cake. And you know what? You haven't seen nothing yet. If you go to www.cisco.com forward slash go forward slash 6500, you can see this and a whole bunch of other really cool features that we built into the Vernal uh, 6500 platform. And hey, you know what? Better than that. You really want some really good geeky content? I want you to click on over to www.techwise.techwisetv.com, and uh, we'll be geeking with you. Thanks for joining.